What is going on everybody? Welcome to the season finale of our NBA 2K19 My League expansion between the Tempo and the Jacks. It's episode number 24. We've got the playoff game against the Tempo and the Pacers. For the first time in two months, we are resuming the series. It's been since August 9th yes, since the last time we uploaded this. As you can tell, it's a little late now for 2K19, so... We will have more news on that following. So, but this will be the finale. So, you guys are going to get the whole postseason here for the tempo and a year four simulation. Yes, and we are jumping straight out to game number five in Nashville. We are up three games to one against these Indiana Pacers. If you guys remember, the Pacers last season knocked us out from going to the NBA Finals based on Jevin Carter's insane playoff performance. So, we are trying to. Have some revenge, have some payback on these Pacers. And they're up 9-4 to four early in this game. And we see R.J. Barrett getting that two-pointer. Going to bring it within 9-6. to six. Jaron Jackson in the corner with a three ball. 9-11. to 11. And they are just taking it to us here in game number five. It's survival mode for them. 16-9. to R.J. is going to bury this three-pointer in the corner as well. We pull back just enough. Paul George trying to do his best, all little off balance type of yeah shot, but unable to convert. Paul George gave you some problems the last time he played Indiana, so this is a revenge kind of series, like you alluded to. Still 16-16 here as we ended up tying the game, and we got Oladipo bringing it out. We got George down low against Leftos. This was a problem, like you said last time. That matchup between George and Leftos just not a good one. And we were going for the alley-oop there. And we got Leftos here wide open. Going to find RJ Barrett. He's going to draw the foul. And he's going to get to the line as David Nwaba causes the foul. RJ is going to hit the first shot. Is through. Second shot will go in off the carom. And we find ourselves down again. 48-41. Here is Iman Shumpert. He's like on those old Spice commercials, isn't he? Iman Shumpert? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's like on YouTube. It's I gotta go. I gotta go back there and look. I, I haven't uh, have not been paying attention to Old Spice commercials <laughs> since Terry Crews days. Yeah, forty eight, forty four here. Nikhil Alexander Walker out there back to Jang and the turnover. Nuaba, he's gonna take it himself. Miss shot, rebounds. Oladipo, miss shot. Back to Miles Turner with the foul. And now they're in the bonus. We got two teams in the bonus right now. We're just giving this game away, it feels like, to Indianapolis. A lot of fouls. There's former Las Vegas Jack, Tyler Johnson. Just throwing that's, that out there. That's, you that's you guys remember call. the Las Vegas Jacks, right? That they're oh, still, I hope you do. They're still around. And I ended up calling uh, Indiana, Indianapolis, the Indianapolis Pacers. Huh. Okay. Error. Yeah. Shumpert going to hit the three ball here as we close the second half. 25 seconds left, and uh-oh, oh. Trey Burke with the steal on that former Jack, Tyler Johnson. He's going to find Alexander Walker down low, and Tyler Johnson going to miss that three-point shot at the end of the first half. It's 52-51. Yeah, he hasn't to missed 51. a beat, man. He hasn't missed a beat. No, missing shots? Yeah. Yeah. Sam Cassell got to go into halftime and cook up a nice little game plan here as the second half. Season on the line here, kind of. Even though they got three games to spare, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, we've you definitely got to I mean. we got to get some killer instinct going here. Win at home, all in, all in. Everybody's wearing the white t-shirts that all in on them. Literally, everybody's wearing the t-shirts, so everybody is all in. Everybody's literally all in. But we're down by one point, so it's not like we're totally out of this. Here's Trey Burke got on the corner. Boosh, the big shot. Jump forward here late third quarter and the slam dunk. The big time alley oop. Not cool. So yeah. we find ourselves down two. Jaron Jackson going to get the green well, in that, the corner. That guy in that Pacers jacket was trying to freak you out. He was out of a seat. I didn't see that. I didn't What's see that? that. He's right behind you. Maybe this everybody game, else saw it. Yeah, this game's getting close here. And yet again, Sam Cassell's going with the backups with the game on the line. Yeah, we got to make sure that our guys are. Are healthy down the stretch and Trey Burke with that huge block and then we've got a fast break transition Alexander Walker gonna hit the two we now take the lead 96 95 Vucevic not on the floor Gallinari playing out of position 
and he gives up the easy two pointers. So 99-97. Oh, Gallinari learned his lesson, and he's gonna get the steal. Brandon Knight out to Trey Burke. Oh, he probably could have taken that shot, but Dwight Powell gonna force his will on Miles Turner, and we find ourselves up by four. Well, you know, that's the good thing about having a very deep bench, is because you can get away with stuff like that. I mean, these are all veterans that have been around, done some good things in the NBA, so it's a very well-rounded basketball team here. That is very true. That is very, very true. But Indiana is going to pull themselves in a little bit closer. 3.58 to go in the fourth quarter, and we've got Brandon Knight on Paul George. This is probably not a good matchup, and George is going to miss the shot. We got a little lucky there. Alexander Walker takes his time, shoots the three ball. He's got it. He's got it, 109 to 101. A big time shot from the one year pro. And he's doing some good things here in his early part of his career. So Miles Turner has the ball here going up against Dwight Powell and another block by Trey Burke, but he can't get the foul up. Missed shot here by Paul George. John Morant taking it out. We're only up by eight and RJ Barrett with the slam dunk. And that, my friends, is going to put this game away. Nashville is going to be moving on to the championship series. The next step before we get to the NBA Finals. Hopefully we win. We'll take a look and see who we're playing against. Yeah, I like that pass by Morant. It's kind of a, a nice rocket pass. Yeah. To RJ Barrett. Get him under the, under the hoop there to put it in. So, Jaron Jackson with 23 points. Did a pretty good job there. Almost got the double-double. Vucevic, I see, with 10 rebounds. So you guys are going to draw the Celtics. Yeah, and only one game separated us. They were 48-34. and 34. We were 49-33. and 33. Story franchise versus a not-so-story franchise. Yeah, it's going to be a very close series. I, I personally believe that. I think it's going to be a grind. Boston, like you said, they have more of a traditional fan base, a more traditional type of mentality of how to build a championship basketball team. We're still trying to find our way. So hopefully we can get this W against Kyrie and this loaded Boston Celtics team here. RJ Barrett with some fakes down on Jalen Brown and he's just going to drive down that baseline and get the early two-pointer. 26-21 as we skip a little forward here and RJ Barrett oh man, he's just taking over. Taking over right now. 29-21 as Rozier takes the ball out. They're down by eight as we near the end of the first quarter. These highlights are gonna go real fast, guys, because we gotta get to the season and the simulation. Yeah, uh, that'll be a lot of fun, but you gotta get through Boston first. Missed shot there, Vooch with the rebound. So Morant's gonna take it out here as the quarter winding down. Let's see if we can make something happen. Dunk, okay. He's got some elevation. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. We saw him at Murray State quite often do things like that. Just dribble, drive, slam right all over people. So really excited to see that with Memphis. I am anyway. I'll speak for myself. You got that Morant and Jaron Jackson combo. Yeah, kind of funny, right? In Memphis, and now they're both teammates here in Tennessee, uh, in Tennessee and Nashville. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. It's like we uh, predicted the future. I don't know. 56-49 as we're nearing the end of the second quarter. Morant going to find Jaron Jackson, and he is going to hit this three-point shot off the iron, and Vucevic with the rebound, able to turn back, face up, square up, and get that two-pointer. So we are now up by nine points, and Kyrie with the shot here is going to miss, and we go into the half in game number one, up by nine points. Things are looking good for Nashville. Okay, yeah, they look like they've been here before. Which they have. Which they have. <laughs> but they look a little bit more grown up, you know. Last year it was the it was the baby tempos. And then this year they a little, more, a little more calmer under fire, it looks like. Yeah, I think that Vucevic has a lot to do with that, too. I mean, his, his veteran presence, obviously the depth, having guys that have been here before kind of give some rest and, and really some, some much-needed minutes off for our starters. Brandon Knight, obviously a big-time guy here for this team. He's super athletic. I've always liked Brandon Knight. I'm really happy that he's going to be able to help us with our playoff push here behind Trey Burke as well. So we are currently up by 11, 78 to 89, as we're nearing the end of the third quarter. Horford down to Kyrie Irving down low. 
Not something you see a whole lot often, but he's going to back down Brandon Knight and then Marcus Smart going to miss this three-point shot here. Man, you must seconds. hate the Celtics because they you haven't shown to make a basket. I, I don't like to Yeah, you're right. I'm not a big Celtics guy. But we see that uh, Dwight Powell in with two points here. And the foul. And he's going to drain this one too. So here you go. We win. 132-106 to 106 is your final score. We absolutely just took it to Boston. Okay, Celtics go down. GE not getting it done today. All that Jeffrey Immelt money flowing into the box. I forgot so. all about Jeffrey Immelt. <laughs> I don't Immelt. even know if he's still there. Wow. John Morant led the way 25 points. 25 points for the point guard. That's big news right there. Yes, and we will go ahead and simulate this game number two. We end up getting the W there. We'll simulate game number three. And we get the W there. So are we on the verge of a sweep here? We're just going to go keep riding this. There you we go. We simulate game four. We sweep Boston. And on the other side, it looks like we might be facing the Houston Rockets as they might have swept the Utah Jazz. The Houston Rockets in a title game? Weird. Is this the Twilight Zone? And guess what? It happened. They so did it. two sweeps in the conference finals. And there you have it. Made it's going to be TV ratings. But... Houston and Nashville. Okay. All right. We go a little southwest central-ish gulf area tennessee valley-ish yeah no big time area no, no real big time markets but we see that you know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that we're not a big time market here in nashville the fans are still coming out it's a star driven league it really is it really is and we have a lot of up and coming stars as well like leftos leftos is the man i mean look at him just going down the baseline against DeAndre Hunter. And you know what's interesting? A lot of red. There's a lot of red in the stadium here. I mean, obviously, it's the NBA Finals. You're going to get a lot of opposition in your crowd. And I would have hoped to see a little bit more white and purple, for sure. But that's not going to happen. I see a lot of red in there. It's about 50-50. Well, you know, they buy tickets, too. And they're probably $2,000. No, we should have banned them. You should have banned him from coming in and said, nope, nope, you got Houston Rockets attire on? Nope. Well, you got to take on James Harden, so what's your strategy here? Are you just going to let R.J. Barrett figure it out, or what's going on? Honestly, I I think he's an easy target to go after when you have the ball in your hands because he doesn't play any defense. So you know what? It's just easy points. He can if he if he gives the effort. Well, I mean, that's but that's the thing. He's sort of a lot of times he just checks out like, yeah, this isn't worth the effort. It's true. You see, Nashville's already in the bonus here, sixteen to sixteen, in the first quarter. I mean, like I said, go after some of these guys. They're gonna foul you. They're gonna play not so good defense, and we'll be in the bonus in no time. But seventeen sixteen as Plumley makes his foul shot, and Jaron Jackson is gonna drive, gonna get it off the glass and in for two. We take the lead. So it's kind of been back and forth, back and forth here early in the first quarter. Something you would expect between two evenly matched clubs. Yeah, and at point there, going to Wanamaker, Plumley back to hands. Let's see what he's going to do. They got a little pick going. Yeah, John Morant trying to challenge him there a little bit. Oh. But Bruno Fernando, a guy that I liked out of Maryland, up at top, but they're going to end up missing this shot here. RJ takes it back out. We've got Vucevic just going to try to grind oh. through, and it's going to get blocked by Bruno. Good stuff. That's why I liked Bruno Fernando. Unfortunately for Vucevic in the tempo, an easy green shot is going to be no good. And here's Bruno Fernando with a three. I guess he can shoot some three balls. Got we got it. RJ Barrett in the corner with the green. That shot's not going to get blocked. Seeing green from downtown. 27-23, the end of the first quarter. And RJ's just trying to grind this clock out a little bit. We've got basically one shot here, and we want John Morant. But check this out. He was actually going up for the shot, apparently. And the reach-in foul is going to draw him to the line here. Because yeah. he's in the bonus. It's a stupid penalty. For four seconds. It's a stupid foul. If you're Houston, fans should be... And Houston going nuts right now. Be like, what are you doing giving them extra points? Yeah. That's going to do it for the first quarter. So Nashville's up by six. High stakes. Get game number one. Got to love it. 39-44 here. And Jaron Jackson going for three. 
Gonna be no good as James Harden comes back out with it. He's gonna find Chris Paul, and they're gonna go up for the alley-oop, and Dwight Powell again with another block. This is why we brought him in here. Jaron Jackson down low. That was too easy. That was too easy for Trey Burke and Jaron Jackson to team up on that. Awesome job by those guys. Alexander Walker shooting a two ball. No good. Can't get the offensive rebound. This shot going to go no good. And it's 54 to 48 at halftime. James Harden looking around like, man, we, we got here. Hope all our fans are happy, even if we don't win, because I, I can't win. It's probably going to be his only chance to win a championship. Okay? <laughs> I mean, come on. Pretty much. Pretty much. So they got to get it done, yeah. honestly. They got to get it done. Same goes for Chris Paul. Most likely. And we see a really good pass. That was really nice. That almost looked like uh, white chocolate. What was his name? You don't remember white chocolate? Put it in the comment section below, guys. Um, forgot his name for Sacramento. Mike Bibby? No, not Mike Bibby. No, my, not Mike Bibby. I think it was Jason Williams. Oh, yeah. Jason Williams. It's like a Jason Williams pass. But here's 66-62. Three, three ball shot by Wanamaker going to go in. Jump to the late third. 87-80. Going to be a missed shot by Vooch. Thornton brings it back out. They had a guy down low. There he is. There's hands right there. Going to go to Harden. And is he going to take a shot here? No, but nice play drawn up by hands, and he missed. He missed. Harden believed in his teammate, and he misses. Unreal. Left those in the corner. Jackson up top. Back out to Barrett, and it's going to get turned over. So we kind of got a little dirt fest going on here with the basketball. Take a shot, Harden. Come on. Oh, there. Vucevic got blown by... Can't happen. 89-82. 42 seconds left in the third, and Plumlee drops the basketball, and John Morant with the slam dunk. That's the Udo training at its finest. Yes. If you guys no, are new here that. and you don't remember that, we signed FK Udo you know what? I saw training on defense. I saw something in real life. I saw a YouTube video about like weird combos. It said Giannis was taking jump shot pointers from Kyle Korver. Oh, so yeah. stuff like that, it does happen. Must happen in real life. Yeah, training. It's crazy. Player mentorship. It's fun. Pretty close game here so far in game one. RJ Barrett gonna draw the foul and get to the line. And he misses the first one. Can't have it, RJ. That's a one-year pro mistake yep. right there. Two-year pro mistake, maybe. He gets the second one. 98-94. Harden in the corner. Working on RJ. Plumley with the pick but here's rj over pursues and pass back to james harden he makes the three houston now down by one point so that over pursue by rj barrett and then oh, a block whoa. bruno fernando on jaron jackson oh he had guy on the left there and then fernando, fernando again DeAndre, uh, is that DeAndre Hunter out there? good movements good i balls. believe i believe so and yeah. that good movement there unreal Unreal. We gave up the three ball to James Harden. The guy that you yeah. can't... You can't get... You got to stay on your man. You know, you don't want to get too excited going for the ball. And that's what happened to R.J. Barrett right there. 33 points for James Harden today. Yeah, he's just... He's going off right now. And here's R.J. Barrett going to shoot a three ball. Can't get it. That would have pulled us within one point. You guys are going to lose. It, don't say that. Don't say it. There's still a lot of basketball left here. Seven minutes. And Jang working on Plumlee. You got Hunter on leftos. Trey Burke. Oh, what a job there by Jaron Jackson. Great job. RJ in the corner for three. Cha-ching. Got him. Got it. 104-103 now. We're still down by one point. Jackson to Jang. Got the green. Who thought that was going to happen? Georgia Jang gets the go-ahead basket. He's been here since the beginning. Hell yeah, yeah. He's a, an original tempo. He, is he the only guy left other than Trey Burke? Patty Mills. Patty Mills. Maybe not. Barely gets in. Yeah, we didn't draft Patty Mills. We traded Reggie for him. Reggie Jackson. You're right, you're right. Here's Chris Paul going to get the missed shot. And he doubles it up. Gets this one in. 106-105. And now Trey Burke. Oh, Trey Burke got away with a little bit of a foul there. A little bit of a push. This shot missed twice. And then the rebound back in. We're down by three. RJ with the three ball. This game's tied late in the fourth. 2.55 left to go in a tie game. And Trey Burke, you done got crossed over. 
<sighs> the two pointer by Chris Paul. Exciting game here. Call a timeout. We got to call a timeout because we got to get John Moran in the game. Yeah. He was at like 50, 50 stamina, so we got to get him back here in the game. Pass going to go to Vucevic. He's got a missed shot. Oh, Harden. Can stay on him. Stay on him. RJ with the D. Harden with the miss. Jackson back out to John Morant. This is our spot here. We got to get two points. If you get that open three ball, we can hit it, but you got to get in there. Oh, nice job by Ja to find that open lane. He's going to get the slam dunk, and that's got the crowd all pumped up. But we are not out of the woodwork yet as Chris Paul's wide open, and Morant leaves his man wide open. 113 to 110. RJ with the dribble drive. He's going to get this two ball in. Now we're down by one. Harden driving. He's going to miss. Harden with the miss. Oh, Hunter no. back to Biombo. Bismack Biombo with the miss. Biombo oh. with the foul and the make. And Biombo? watch this. Look at this little clap right there. He's loving it. Oh, he's digging that. The former tempo is loving it right there. We let him go. And John Morant's going to get a clutch, clutch foul spot right here. This foul shot, he makes it. 115-113. Got to get this one, though. Got to get this back here to get down by one. He's going to make this. And now we jump to 36 seconds oh, left. What was that? We had to foul. Oh, okay, yeah. So we had to foul. I thought you might have been able to play out that possession, but maybe not. Uh, 117, 114 left dose. Going to go to the line. Each, DeAndre. each team is in the bonus right here, so that kind of favors us since we do have to foul anyway, and Leftos misses. He's cold tonight. 0 for 3 from 3 range. Yeah. Gets that one at least. So two points, and Houston will finish it. Yep, they ended up getting the W here. 127 to 120. We just got into some trouble here with leaving the duo open. You can't leave James Harden open. You can't leave Chris Paul open. And that's eventually what ended up happening. Sucks. Yeah. You got to get Leftos going next game, I think. Yes, and we're going to jump, actually, to game six. Okay. And we ended up losing that game, which means one thing. We had a chance to put this team away. We okay. were up three games to two. Game seven on the line. It's going to come down to this, I guess. And it's back at the Bridgestone Arena. Yes, and the Nashville Predators are apparently not playing tonight. So there you go. <laughs> There you go. Here's RJ Barrett with the green. Three points. Easy money. Yeah, the Bismack Biombo is starting today, right? Yeah, and you know what? We're going to attack him, too. We're going to go right back down there with Vucevic against Biombo. Two fouls. Two fouls already. Got to love that. 18 to 12. Vucevic at the line. He's going to get that in. And now we find ourselves up by 10, nearing the end of the first. And RJ's going to drill this two point shot in. Go to the second quarter, up by 18 points. 33 to 51, we are just taking it to Houston. The big thing though, don't lay off the gas pedal. You have to keep going here because you don't want Chris Paul or James Harden to make a comeback. Yeah, they're not shooting very well today, so this is a classic choke job here that we're witnessing 65 to 46 58 percent to 38 percent so you're gonna wonder if maybe it's gonna get a little bit closer down the stretch and it ended up not getting close whatsoever as in the fourth quarter we find ourselves up 16 so maybe they drew a little bit closer but job ja Morant here just trying to dribble this out dribble the clock out and it looks with all intents and purposes that we're gonna win this game and you know what, we're just gonna drill a three point shot to stick it. Cause there's still time on the clock and you don't wanna give up the, the basketball okay. with a shot clock violation anyway. But 122 to 103 and guys, your Nashville tempo, I'm gonna call it. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. wait, uh, wait. Okay, okay, yeah, let's go, wait, 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 wait. Three seconds, two seconds, one. Zero's on the clock, the Nashville tempo are your 2021 NBA champions. Uh, yeah, whatever. 
That's cool. What about the Las Vegas Jacks? We don't care about the Jacks. <laughs> we don't care about those uh, dang Jacks. This is your moment. We're the kings of the NBA for 2021. For the third year in franchise history, you have delivered a title to Nashville. This is the ultimate GM job. I don't know what I don't know what you're doing over there. I mean, we made we made moves to win now. Yeah. Well, you made long-term moves, but they just happen to help help you in the immediate future. So, good job. Thank you. You deserve it. Thank you. You win. Thank you. You have won this dynasty. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, in this season sim, maybe you guys won a national. Uh, yeah, I keep saying that a national title, NBA championship as well. It could do it. John Morant, MVP, savvy draft pick by Nashville's GM. Nine assists per game. The conclusion of the NBA Finals. We are now going into the off season of 2021, and we're, we're going to be simulating the entirety of year number four, just to see how things would have panned out had we just left it to the CPU to take control of everything. Yeah, which should validate my strategy. Oh, versus you playing. Mm. The Jacks are going to be better next year than oh. Nashville. Book Let's it. just see what happens. Oh, God. So far, it's not looking good for you. Oh, God. It's not looking good for you again. Oh, God, no. No. Well, these guys aren't signed anywhere. Okay, the draft lottery. We still got the Olympians and the Vortex around here, so I'm interested to see what's going to happen with them. So let's see what we got. Oh, Vancouver's going sixth. That's a pretty, it's kind of an upset right there. There's yeah. no reason why they should go six. That's too bad. Well, that's the first one off the board. Phoenix goes number five. So Cincinnati is still waiting for their future here, and they're still alive for the number one pick. Oh, they're going to give it to... Oh, wait a minute. So they, they tricked me. They tricked us. They were like, ooh, Charlotte, ooh. And then boom. What is that? I don't know. That's mean. Wow. That's so, mean. Wow. So Cincinnati is going to pick in the four slot, even though they had the highest chance of securing the number one. And apparently, I guess Charlotte's still there. Okay. We're going to go number two. That only leaves one more team. And there you go. That's that. It's going to be the LA Clippers, number one. <laughs> oh, we've received 25 trade offers for the next pick. Would you like to view them? No. <laughs> no. So these guys are all fake, but we're just looking at the overall and just what this team needs. I mean, they need like everything. Yeah, maybe a big man could help them. Roland Wade, but he's 24. I think small forward might be a good call. Want to go Dwayne Baxter because he's just younger. Well, I mean, we look at the DE rank, he's 14th and the 2K rank is seventh. So it seems like the best guy up on the board is Walt Haley. Seems like that's the guy Walt that you would it? take, but yeah, you'd have to do it. Okay, let's do it. You've got to go chalk at this point. 6'10", 249 at small forward. Vancouver is now on the clock, and surprisingly no offers for that pick. What about my guy? Like, Baxter? Uh, they do need a point guard. You got Randy Holloway and Jackson Scott. I'm going to go with, names. yeah. They got Bates Jop, who's playing really well. They got Montrose Harrell. They got too many big guys, so maybe Sebastian Carson. That's my pick. I don't know anything about this dude. From LaSalle. Jacks are on the clock now, and coming up next are the Tempo with back-to-back -back selections. And that, mm -hmm. I believe it's uh, one of those trades. You know, it's been so long, I don't even remember. Sebastian... Saramango, or Saramago. There you go. I just like that name. But I got John T. Porter. I need a shooter, probably to replace somebody like Redick. Or point guard, because now I don't have Tony Parker anymore. But, you know, it's a little bit down the road here. You know, I mean, at this point, I mean, who are we going to get that's super good? I like Ernest Sherman from Xavier. What do you think about that? Well, you have to shoot for the guy that's going to give you the best chance to be like a 7th or 8th man at this point because you're yeah. just trying to play for one year. This is a one-year simulation for year four. So there's no point in taking a a 
project guy. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try Ernest and just let the chips fall where they may. We did no scouting. Best three-point shooter. Tempo are up. Kind of like you said off screen, we're um, pretty much good everywhere, so it doesn't really matter who we take at this point. But I'm looking at this guy, Stanley Caldwell and Albert Slasher. Yeah, I'm gonna take both of them right here at this pick. We could go probably elsewhere. Maybe this guy, Dakolaus Neonitis. You gotta but, find the next leftos. Well, I mean, we would take him. We would take that guy. But Stanley Caldwell is pretty dang good. He's 24 though. Yeah, that's probably a downside of things. But we're gonna take Caldwell and Slasher because I know that we're gonna need backup point guard help at some point. There you go, Stanley Caldwell wearing those tempo. Tempo yes, colors, probably. And then Slasher out of Pacific. Pacific Tigers. He's very specific for our type of offense that we run. All right, so with our 35th pick, I think what we're going to want to do is maybe, like, we maybe we could have taken this guy, Dakolaus. That seems like something that would be realistic for them. Yeah. But, uh, but this dude... I mean, Vucevic, he's got plenty of time left, but maybe you could find a center that you could, could be his understudy, you know, for four or five years or whatever. Maybe Eddie, he'll be really good. Very skilled shooter from long distance, or we can find a guy that just boxes out. Speed is questionable. We could go with Eddie Harvey. Let's do it. Jacks are coming up here. Gus Young, I like that name. Oh, he's Ohio State. Look what you just did. So post free agency, let's look at the teams you were able to snag. Who did you get? Nobody. You don't have any money to spend. No money to spend and no reason to spend any money either or trade anybody away to get money because this team is just legit. Job ran up to Jaron Jackson, up one, I mean, can you argue with this team? And the aging curve is crazy. You got 24, 22, 21, 21. Only going up from here. Let's see how the Olympians did, see if they got any better. So they have Bobby Portis. Darius Baisley is getting better. They did manage to sign Kyle Anderson. And then they were also going to get DeLon Wright. Might be taking over point guard duty. Korkmaz is going to be a depth guy for them as he was with the Jacks. They did get also former Las Vegas Jack, Isaiah Whitehead. And that would do it for the Olympians. So, I mean, this looks like a competent roster. It's not They're great. more competent than they were last year, that's for sure. Now, the Vancouver Vortex, their big signing was Alfred Payton, and he will take over starting point guard duties for the Vortex. They got Batadze, who's really coming around, kind of playing with Jakob Pertle there, getting better. They got T. Vicenzo, as well as Marjanovic. They got Boban to be another center. So how many do they have now? They got freaking three centers, although Batadze can play power forward for them too. So they like their big men. Yes, they do. So that's what the Vortex are looking at. I. I think Cincinnati might be better than Vancouver. I don't know. I, it's hard to say at this point. And then we have the Jacks here. You got Murray Bamba as our big two. Porter's back. He was a restricted free agent. We got him a fresh new deal, as well as he played for us offensively. So he's, I think he'll enjoy that. Cam Reddish still logging in. We're hoping that Reddish can take the next step and be our starting small forward. And Bogdanovich, who's getting a little bit older, he sees minus two now, would be our main shooting guard. Oh, oh, what's that? Carmelo. You guys keep digging back to the old bogeys on this team. I know, but he's going to try to be a bench guy. He's going to accept his role. He realizes he's 37 years old. We're paying him a lot of money, okay, to be a veteran presence off of our bench. So Costa Kufos was also added. We do get this dude back, Leandro Balmaro, who was a holdover draft pick from Europe, or from Argentina, I believe. Is that correct? Argentina. So, Leandro... Yeah, you stole him from us. We wanted another leftos. A-plus from three-point range. So, this guy can shoot, 
and that'll do it for the Jacks. I don't know how we're going to stack up against the tempo. Murray Bama better stay up. We are currently two players over the limits, and unfortunately, Patty Mills, one of the OGs of this Nashville Tempo franchise, has got to go. We traded for him. He's overjoyed, though. He's overjoyed. He's, yeah, he has a championship. He loves it there. He bought a nice house. He did. And he served us well. He served us well. We are going to have to release him to free agency at 33 years old, 73 overall. Just not going to play. You got too many point guards on the roster. And way too many point guards. We wanted to give Albert Slasher just a little bit of a try, a little bit of a look there in the summer league. He just didn't really prove a whole lot to us. And plus, we've already got a pretty young point guard here with Ja Morant. Wanted to back somebody up with him, you know, with Brandon Knight and Trey Burke being the two veteran presents. Probably going to end up leaving us at some point down the road. It's but, just not, yeah, not good enough shooters. You must not be handling the NBA climate very well. This ain't Pacific, dude. Okay, so looking at the tempos lineup here, any predictions? Do you think you're going to repeat? How far do you think this team can get? I think we can get to the playoffs yet again. That Eastern division that we're in is very, very bad, and I think that we could possibly make it to another finals run. That was a pretty miraculous run, though. We had to go through a lot of really good teams in the East in order to just to get to that point and then go to go up against Houston with that Paul and Harden duo. That was tough, but I think we can do it again. John Morant, 85. Barrett, 88. This is a good team yet again. We've still got the same core, the same group. Yeah, I think we've got it going on. A lot of depth as well offensively, so it's going to be tough for the rest of the league. Now, as for the Jacks, I say don't sleep on this team. I mean, our starting lineup, I think we're in the same ballpark as Nashville as far as our starting lineup is concerned. Depth is a no. <laughs> depth is a no. Bogdanovich has, has gone down a little bit from last year, but we got, I mean, it's a little bit on, we're on the unproven side, but I mean, we got some young guys, Bamba, Porter, Reddish, and Jamal Murray. This team could take the next leap this year, for sure. But yeah, our depth here, I mean, Carmelo is going to average about 19 a game. Seth Curry, 18 minutes. Costa Kufos will be picking up some minutes as well. I might tune down a little I'm, bit. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Eight, 81 to 83 versus 87 and 88 is quite the big difference. I got two 86s. And you want to talk about upside, Nashville's still very, very young. Oh, that's true. I know that. Cincinnati starting lineup, not too bad for a second-year organization. I mean, they got DeLon Wright, Scotty Lewis, who they like a lot and think – that he can be really, really good. They signed Kyle Anderson, like we talked about. They acquired Portis, Alex Len. They get defense inside. They don't have Gasol anymore. His one-year trial is over with. But this, to me, looks more like Las Vegas. Yeah, okay. As far as the overall ratings go. I mean, Darius Baisley. They're gonna get him. They're gonna work him in a lot. The Henson's gonna be kind of an offensive sub. And look at Johnny that depth. Frazier played well for them last year. Corkmaz and Whitehead. I mean, this team might go from last to competing for that eighth seed. I mean, I could see them being on the bubble. Another team, unfortunately for them, though, I I don't think they have a chance in the Western Conference, but they have Alfred Payton, Kevin Herter, Josh Green, Goga Patadze, and Jakob Pertl. So they have size for sure. I mean, you see Wagner there. Um, Bates Job played really well for this team, and Jevin Carter can play well as well and you got Grayson Allen so Mark Janovich for defensive you know mismatches and stuff like that so this team has no chance though let's be frank it's the Western Conference okay you're not gonna compete for the eight seed but it'll be nice to see if they can progress the moment of truth can Las Vegas hold their own against the Nashville Tempo we're not worried about the Vortex and the Olympians maybe we'll check on them here in this simulation but the key question is, can Nashville repeat? Are they still going to be a really great team to beat in that Eastern Conference? And what is Las Vegas going to do in this simulation? So what do you say we get right into it? Oh boy. Okay, we are through November 30th. So on December 1st, the Jacks are sitting at 11 and 12 with a nice little nifty four-game losing streak mm. here as they did play the Tempo, who are not faring oh, much better. What is that? How about that? But they did 
get the W here, unfortunately for us. Let's see, uh, Bogdanovich, 30 minutes. So Carmelo's getting about 14 there, six points. Cam Reddish was led the way with 17. And then you see the tempo, Leftos was killing us again. What's new with a Leftos, Barrett, Jackson? Man, so, kind of the NBA championship hangover here. Oh yeah, a little bit of a hangover going on. So now let's see here. The Olympians are 8-13. and 13. Man, that's disappointing. I thought they could do a little bit better than that. I did too. But the team chemistry is high. Spirits are high at 85%. They like yeah. each other. Vortex sitting at 7-12 and 12 right now. So they're not doing much better. Let's get to the new year, shall we? Okay, well, we are back where we were at. 18-22 and 22 now for the Jacks. 20-17 and 17 for Nashville. Oh yeah, we're coming back. So, making a push. Kind of, yeah. I Time mean, to get it back into gear. I wonder if that Southeast Division is getting better. Cincinnati at 13 and 12, Vortex 14 and 21. Let's look at the conference standings right now, and the Pelicans are in first. I believe they still have Anthony Davis. No Zion. He's, he's on Phoenix. So the Phoenix Suns are back better than ever. Golden State's kind of slogging around there. So, not too hot. Las Vegas, we're not too far out of the playoff mix. I mean, you need to Clippers. get on a nice winning streak. Yeah, so the Rockets are the eight seed. So, yeah, not going to take too much to get back into this mix, but I'm happy to see Vancouver at least isn't in the basement. And then we look at the Eastern Conference. You get Milwaukee, Boston, Philly. What's new up there? Nashville? It's kind of hanging out around there at the seven seed. It looks like LeBron's an eighth. So, the Olympians are better than the Wizards and the Hornets right now. Okay, now we are entering the home stretch. We're in February here, so the season is you know, a little over halfway, 60 some odd percent. Jack's at 25 and 27. Tempo, again, they're not just, they're not killing it right I now. I know, we keep hovering around that 500 spot. You can be better than that. You just gotta get on a little five or 16 winning streak. You'll be right back where you thought you'd be. But I'd like to see them do better. So let's see what they are gonna be at after February. Okay, as of March 1st, the Jacks are sitting at 32-31. Tempo at 33 and 30. So this is getting pretty tight. This is very disappointing. I'm I'm eating Nashville. I'm eating my words at this point because I, I was basically saying that Las Vegas was not on par with us, and you prognosticatingly enough said that we were. You know what though? I really thought Nashville would be a little bit better. Cincinnati's creeping back up. 27-33. They beat us. And then the Vortex are 25 and 35. So, how much season do we have left? Might go to well, April 13. Let's well go the whole way. Let's do it. Okay, the home stretch coming in here. You see Nashville going on a huge winning streak in April and late March, guys. This is pretty nuts right now. So, my early analysis on this is that what they did was they took the first half of the year off pretty much, and then now they're turning it on they in got, the second half. They got finished. They just lost their last four, man. Oh, my God. We did it. You made we it. We did it. I didn't even look at the schedule because it goes straight into the awards. So Nashville slides in as the five seed, and it looks like that five-game losing streak at the end, or four-game losing streak, hurt their seed a little bit. It's all right. It's right where we want to be. You know, We want to be kind of under the radar, fly under the radar yeah. yet again. You're tied with the 76ers. Milwaukee had 54 and 28. And how many did Chicago? So you are only three games better than Chicago. So the eight seed. So that was a tight Eastern Conference right there. I mean, Atlanta was one game better as a three seed. So let's look at what Vegas did. We went 41 and 41, and apparently that's good enough. Wow. So basically, in other words, you kind of backed in. Yeah, we did. Let's check out what happened. If I can get to my calendar. The Jacks. Ooh, no, you the did. right month. You didn't back in. Oh, yeah, you kind of did. I mean, kind of eh, nice little win streak here in March, but then we started losing. If I bet you if we lost the Kings right there, we would have missed the playoffs. Let's check the standings here, and like I said, wow. How did they give us the seed, I wonder? <laughs> Holy cow. It wasn't off a division record either. It wasn't conference record, because Memphis would have been better there. Whew. Must have been some tiebreakers involved, but Whew. you guys got in. Barely. You I can say that we made the playoffs. Watch. You guys are going to win the whole thing. You guys are going to get in there. I and... love it. 
Unbelievable. All right, let's sim the whole thing here. Simulate current round. Let's see what we got here. One nothing Philly, two nothing Philly. Thinking around. Ooh, we got picked up a game, picked up a game. We got two one Phoenix, two two Nashville. Oh, we tied him. Oh, Philly's up. No, no. Oh, Vegas, come on. Come on, Nashville. Oh, no! yes. Bull crap. We went farther. Bull crap. We went farther. <laughs> Bull Unbelievable. Crap. No. Oh, Back out. Wow. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, well, I guess everybody needs their time to shine. So yeah, uh, we at least the universe threw me a bone. Go I'll ahead, take it. go ahead, Las Vegas. Let's go. Surprise us. Sim that cur around. Come on, baby. Come on. It's like playing it's, roulette. It's not gonna. It's come not on, gonna, baby. It's not gonna end. It's not gonna end well. Come on. Oh god. Oh god. Well. Okay. Two one OKC. Okay. Oh yeah. 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 Let's do it. Oh no! You guys are done. You guys are done. Oh come on! Oh no! <laughs> Every time you see that dialogue Dang box it. pop up, oh. that's it. You're done. Dang. All right, so Nashville gets bounced. Can we get New Orleans and Orlando, please? Vegas advances at the potential NBA Finals. For, I would love to see anybody out of that West, but I, I would really want Orlando. Oh, let's see I want Orlando. Milwaukee. So Milwaukee. Dang. And New Orleans. And How Milwaukee is going to sweep. Nope, just kidding. There you go. So Milwaukee Bucks have won the NBA championship. Yeah. There you go. Okay, well, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. Only because we pulled it off. But you actually won the NBA championship. So technically, I think you won the dynasty. If I simmed here and won it, maybe we could have kind of called it a draw. But gold over here is the winner he constructed a better team winner 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 chicken dinner yeah. all right well that was fun that series was fun i know that we hadn't uploaded in uh, quite some time but we are officially putting a bow on this thing so i hope you guys really enjoyed it and sorry it took us so long to get this season finale here and done with but thank you guys for all the comments for all the suggestions everything that you guys brought to the table for this series we are coming back with 2k20 and we'll see you guys whenever that next video drops. We got something really cool planned for you. So stay right here for NBA 2K20 Dynasty. All right. Yeah, signing off here. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Leave a like if you like this thing. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that red button for subscribe. Or my logo at the bottom of our head quarter. See you guys in the next one. As always, peace.